Hi everyone, my name is Najat Al-Fadeli, a bachelor geology student from the German University of Technology in Oman. When I first started my studies, my family used to hold a random rock and ask me, what kind of rock is that? I used to get annoyed, but then I realized that they were trying to show me their support. Well, things didn't change much when I declared my love to dead animals. I'm so passionate about fossils, because every fossil is a story told by Earth. The place where I come from is known as the paradise of geology and this is due to the different geological wonders that you might find in Oman. What I'm going to say might seem crazy but one of these wonders is a well-preserved association of a bizarre bivalve group in the middle of the desert. Unbelievable, right? These shells belong to an extinct bivalve group known as Rhodus. Just imagine that you are walking in a beach and suddenly you find a shell that looks like this. No one knows why Rhodus disappeared. Maybe they found off the asteroid with the dinosaurs when the mammals saved themselves. Anyway, Rhodus occurred as the grandmother of the Mediterranean Sea, what so called the Titus Ocean. They are characterized by their asymmetric shells, which varies from one species to another. Their evolution during the Cretaceous has been proposed to be at the expense of other organisms. Rhodus can get very big. And they are known to build reefs, just like what corals do today. And this is make me wonder how much time it takes for the complete shell to be built. Answering this question is all what my project revolves around. Erlangen was the destination to follow my passion, and the place where I decided to answer my question, collaborating with other scientists and learn from them. I'm studying three different rudest species from the Cretaceous time from the central part of Oman when they found their best moment to grow when Oman was flooded by shallow sea in warm climatic condition. Roses have a growth rings just like trees and in my project I counted these rings in order to estimate the growth rate of the individual species. I did that by considering that these fossil bivalves as an environmental archives. So I could understand under which environmental conditions their shells prefer to grow. Despite the beauty of the small Erlangen, the rock lab is the best place to spend your time in. Well, this is what a geology student would say. So, I spent 50% of my stay in Erlangen in the rock lab, applying different methods and trying different techniques to analyze my samples. I started with documenting the samples by taking some photographic pictures, then I selected the parts where I needed to cut. Right after that, it was the moment of truth, where my samples and I are finally ready to face the masonry machine. Right after that, I start on preparing my thin sections, which I used to count the growth lines in my rudus. And then I moved to the dendrochronology lab in the geography department to use the same program that they have been used to counting the true rings and counting the growth lines in my rudus. Rudus have annual external growth band with finer internal increments. The external growth band tend to grow up to 1 cm per year, just as fast as corals. The variation in the internal growth lines indicate the shell response to the surrounding changes in the environment. The thick band show the favorable living conditions, whereas the finer band indicate the harsh conditions. I assume that the growth line will grow at the same time scale, so I collected my measurements and I applied some wavelet statistics to check the patterns of frequency and rhythmicity of the growth lines. The wavelets indicate a rhythmic behavior corresponding most strongly to a periodicity of 62 and 32 increments and this is might indicate a lunar cycle and the induced tidal fluctuations. But this is not the end of the story and to solve the mystery of my rudest age and growth rate and to confirm the obtained results during my bachelor thesis, I still have to apply some chemical analysis of carbon and oxygen stable isotopes.